Chris Kermitsos is the founder of PodFest Expo, PodFest Multimedia Expo. He's also the executive producer of The Messengers, a podcast documentary, and uh, somebody who's helped launch uh, how, how many thousands, hundreds of uh, podcasts for clients, help them grow and achieve success. Somebody who's really on top of everything going on in the podcasting industry. Uh, welcome, Chris. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Russ. Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, it's great to chat with you. Um, before we get into all the podcasting, uh, since you posted this publicly on Facebook, I assume it's okay for me to ask you about, uh, you had something happen in your life that, uh, very few people experience. Uh, <laughs> did you want to, do you feel comfortable talking about that or of if course, not, we'll just move right I, would, on. I would love, I would love to. <laughs> so Chris not only became a father, he actually delivered the baby. Can you can you tell the story as you told me? It was just such a wonderful story. Yeah, so I had a, a wingman in my mother-in-law, but basically my, my in-laws showed up on Sunday night at uh, 9 a.m. Monday morning. My wife said, I think we need to go to the birth center. At 9.39, she starts screaming my name. We're still at the house. She goes, my water just broke. And we're all no, we all knew we were in trouble. Um, my, we have a three-year-old. Sedona says, Mommy, are you okay? And we asked my father-in-law to take her for a walk around the block. At 9.44, we tried to get Katie out of the house. She goes, this is not going to happen, guys. I need to go back in bed. We're having the baby in the house. <laughs> oh, so wow. Now I started to panic, but obviously you try and show a calm face. Um, at nine, at 9.55, I called 911. <laughs> Wow. And at 9.59 a.m., we have a baby. <laughs> Me and my mother-in-law, uh, Linda, delivered uh, our, my second daughter, Savannah, uh, in the house. And then uh, the EMS uh, fire department showed up a few minutes later. But we, it was, everything was already done at that point. Wow. Now, your mother-in-law isn't a, a doctor or a nurse. Yeah, she is a school nurse, believe it or not. But okay. she's never, to answer your question, she's never she's delivered never a baby. So, <laughs> so, so she, but, but luckily, she, we had someone with a nursing background, which definitely helped the situation. But we were both uh, treading water, trying to figure it out as we were going along. Now, did you stay in a Holiday Inn Express when you <laughs> yes, were <laughs> Yes, I did. When I was up in D.C., I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express with Dave Jackson. <laughs> there you go. So that's the, the commercial really is accurate. Um, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know how good the room is, but the, uh, you know, what you can do the in the coming days. Yeah. yeah, you can give birth. You can you can do all those kind of things. So uh, anyway, congratulations on, on becoming a father and uh, really being a hero and uh Everybody's doing well. Everybody's in good health. Phenomenal. Uh, because the our office is at the end of our one bedroom, I'm in my daughter's room right now doing this live stream because the baby's sleeping. And she's one month old, uh, nine pounds and change. So really excited. Everything going well and very blessed. This is a very great year for us. Awesome. We are talking with Chris Kermitzos. He's the founder of PodFest Expo, PodFest Multimedia Expo. Uh, takes place March 7th to 9th of uh, 2019. It's in Orlando, Florida. And, uh, of course, their tickets remaining. Uh, Chris is good enough to do a discount of 15% off. Uh, if you use the code, let me check that. That is uh, LUniverse is the code. If you use the code LUniverse, uh, you can get uh, L Universe 15 with 15. Yeah, L 15. Universe 15. Thank you. So L Universe 15, you can get 15% uh, off. You can go to livestreamdeals.com and click the link or just go to podfestexpo.com uh, and enter that in at checkout. Uh, I'll also be giving away one uh, free ticket uh, by the end of the show. It's a free general admission ticket. And uh, please only go for it if you actually think you can make it to Orlando. We'd love to see somebody uh, put that to good use. Uh, but if you are interested in that, throw in the chat uh, why you'd like to attend, what you think you would get out of attending a podcast event, and I would uh, would love to give that uh, away. Thank you, Chris, for uh, that generosity. Um, Talk about the event. So it's it's going to be the fifth annual uh, PodFest Expo. It's one of the biggest podcasting events uh, going on each year. 
what's coming up this year? What's uh, what's new for uh, 2019? So just so people understand, we'll have around a thousand attendees. Um, we have exhibitors. So basically any podcast hosting company or hardware, this is a place where you get to meet the heads of these companies, talk to them directly, a lot of the media personnel, and then our education is top notch. I mean, you're one of our presenters. We try and find really amazing presenters. I actually travel the country at different conferences looking for talent primarily. So um, Chris Curran, our next speaker, will be uh, speaking at PodFest. So the, the topics are very varied. Uh, we have a workshop for people that don't know how to podcast. We actually have a, a YouTube conference that takes place on Thursday, the first day for those that uh, want to learn more about YouTube. It's called VidFest, believe it or not. We'll have about two, 300 people attending that. So yeah, and Chris, I'll have a booth, of course. Thank you, Chris. Um, it, it's just a really great place to network and meet really amazing people. And we have some amazing after parties and some announcements I can't make just yet, but you'll see some big announcements coming up in the next couple of days. That's awesome. PodFest Expo, March 9th, March 7th to 9th, rather, and it includes VidFest. So uh, it, for the people on the YouTube live streaming area, uh, there's going to be a lot of content for you as well. Yeah, if you buy a VIP ticket, it includes the VidFest uh, pass. That will That is probably one of the best intimate how-to conferences on YouTube you're going to find right now. Uh, many of them are fan fest. They're pretty big. Uh, right. This is where you could actually connect and network with the content creators and you, the people you had just before. To get 10,000 subscribers on YouTube is just not easy, and it's extremely uh, difficult. But if you get to that level, the amount of uh, revenues you could achieve if you do it right it can be immense. Wow. Uh, tell us about The Messengers, the podcast documentary that uh, you put together. Uh, tell us about that, and uh, where can we find it? So if you go on Amazon or iTunes, uh, The Messengers, a podcast documentary is the full title. And it was a documentary we made about the world of podcasting. I saw this world emerging a couple of years back and I said, wouldn't it be great if we traveled the country and captured uh, just a snapshot of what's going on and basically have it as an official biography of this medium. Uh, so it served as much. We've had over 50 five-star reviews on iTunes a whole bunch on Amazon and it's, it, it's we've, we've had thousands of people watch that movie. And uh, thank you for mentioning it. If you're a prime member, it's free of charge uh, or you could rent it. It's, it's a really good movie. We, we did a theater circuit this past year and we, we came in semifinalists in a couple of film festivals around the world. Let's talk about the podcast industry. Um, every year you kind of see like high level prediction, like this is the year of podcasting or this is the year podcasting is going to go 100 percent mainstream or whatever. Kind of where do you see podcasting on 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 that curve? Like where where is it? Is it taking off? Is is this year different? Are we at a different stage than than in the past? So so here's my vantage point. Because of where I sit, I see uh, kind of what you're saying. I see everybody. I talk to the hosting company people. I talk to the industry people. Um, thank you, Addy. Where, where you see podcasting is radio is uh, transitioning into on-demand audio. They really can't figure it out. They're having a tough time, um, except for like the likes of NPR. Uh, you have a lot of money coming into the space. Uh, they're exiting because they're finding out that audio is a, a long-term play and it takes a while. So you're going to see a lot of uh, more money come in and trying to figure out if they could make 10x or whatever. Um, but but at its purest form, you're going to see more content coming out in audio. A lot of audio dramas. Um, those are like the fantasy fiction or the crime dramas. You're going to see more of that. It's going to mimic what's out there in TV. A lot of uh, TV um, and movies are getting picked up now out of the audio drama space of podcasting. There's still a lot of unclaimed niches in the in pretty much every vertical in podcasting. And uh, for instance, for business podcasting, that's one of the few areas that's very saturated because a lot of business people right. went into it. What you're going to see, though, is unique formats come out of that. So instead of someone doing a business interview, maybe the interview is one question. And that is a podcast that could be formatted for Alexa or Google Mini because it's a skill that you could put out. And it's the one question of the day from an entrepreneur. So you, you just got to be nimble. But the 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 growth is is not even close until you have your grandfather listening to a podcast or like right. what I call the, the old timers that love radio, or whatever, you're not going to have the full transition. So it's going to take another few years, but uh, it's all happening. And then on demand audio is really the future. So I don't want to get too futuristic on you, but um, what we're going to see happen is personal assistants. 
that Google and Amazon, whoever's developing these personal assistants, will learn your voice, learn everything you say via your podcast, and then they'll be able to consult your clients for you. But you're talking about five or six years from now, but that's all going to happen in the near future. Wow. That's that's exciting. I mean, when you when you talk about these um, business podcasts, that could be one question. You're talking about really like two minute podcasts, right? You're talking yeah, about because- like I ask you a question about, you know, la- what's the key to launching a podcast? And you go, you know, make sure that you've got X, Y, Z and you say it in two minutes and we're out or, you know, it could even be a deeper dive into some area. It's going to be very niche. Yes. It's because, um, Ross, you know this, there's so many business podcasters already catering to all kinds of stuff. So the only other thing you can do is find a unique format or a unique style, uh, or put more time into it. Like when John Lee Dumas created entrepreneur on fire, right. no one had done a daily podcast after him, a hundred people tried it and it didn't work for the majority of them for 99% of them. He was the first that got that market share. So you just got to be really creative. Um, I'm in the, I have podcasts for children. So the children's space is exploding. That's an area that's really underserved right now. Uh, anyone that's doing that, you have science podcasts doing really well. EDU, uh, I was up at the first ever conference at Harvard for EDU podcasters. That's really exploding. So you're going to see a lot of different areas that still, there's so many niches still open. It's not even... It's not even funny how how much opportunity there is for uh, people who may be doing a live stream and want to make that into a a podcast. um, What type of um, when you look at like interview talk show kind of content, um, obviously, there's like the Joe Rogan style, which is high production. And then they they go on for three hours and video cameras and all that. But for people who are independent podcasters from home doing doing kind of what we're doing here, what kind of, um, what, what tips would you have as far as uh, what should be extracted and made into a podcast? Maybe how long should it be? Um, should it be kind of the organic conversation or should it be edited and re- greatly tightened up? What, what kind of advice would you give to somebody doing, say, an hour live stream and making it into a podcast? So live streams are tough because... Um... It's still an uncharted area. It's really fresh. You're one of the pioneers. Like people have been live streaming before what you're talking about, professional live streamers. Uh, there's just not a lot. So it's all being tested right now. Right. Uh, one of the key areas like people are testing on YouTube right now is they're live streaming their pets and people are donating real time money to feed their pets. Um, med- meditation is one of the leaders in live streaming. 24 hours, you'll see five or 10 channels live streaming meditations. Some of them will have five to 10,000 people listening in real time or watching. So mm-hmm. that's an area I've trial run uh, live streaming meditations for my wife on YouTube. Uh, so I want you to understand YouTube is like uh, being in a, YouTube's like being in a shopping center, but it's almost like being in Amazon too, where you could type in what you're looking for and right. it pops up the product. So there's a lot of traffic in YouTube live stream. Um, I, I'm a big, put it this way, I'm a big booster in YouTube live streaming. A bunch of us are still testing a lot of that out. So I don't have exact numbers. I would just tell you on live streaming, it's a it's the, the new frontier. I would test, test, test. Uh, one thing I do like, Ross, is when people are like uh, doing a live stream and they have a consistent time slot every week that they live stream, right. people kind of get used to you popping up in their feed maybe every Wednesday at whatever time. So that's something that I think pe- people should be tested. But remember, live streaming, the person going through is streaming. Right, on YouTube, right. I like because uh, if it's specific content, I'm going to search it out and find you. Um, so a friend of mine, Tyler Chef's a real estate guy. We were trying to 24-7 uh, live stream his um, real estate education. So we're still trying to see what works. Yeah. I, I mean, one of the things that uh, stood out for me this past year was at uh, Vid Summit. They actually did a 24 uh, five, uh, five days of 24 hours a day uh, live streaming. The founder, Daryl Eves was, uh, the main person, but then, uh, Dan Norton, who was in the chat ended up taking it, taking on about 22 of those hours and and doing it. And I think it's a, it's kind of a cool way to bring the event to people who can't be there. Not so much the, the sessions, which you might be repackaging and selling the replays, but the networking and the, uh, you know, the vendors. Get people excited about the energy. 
and and kind of spreads the word, you know, gets that FOMO going for people maybe to attend the the year after. Yeah, it's all about marketing, Ross. Honestly, it's mm -hmm. uh, there's no uh, right answer. Um, it's all about what you're trying to serve. If it's a live event and you're doing a live stream on the floor, absolutely. And actually, if you want to help us run one on uh, PodFest, let me know. I'd love to do something like that with you. Um, create some excitement there on yeah. the floor. I think that'd be a great idea, and it's good coverage for everybody. Well, oh, sounds fantastic. Um, tell us a little bit. I know you 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 you're not releasing everything yet, but tell us a little bit in terms of speakers or sessions uh, coming up this year, either on the uh, the main event or in the uh, the the vid fest as well. Actually, one of the things we've noticed recently is uh, a couple of our podcasters have cracked the code on Instagram to really drive traffic uh, and a lot of traffic. I'm talking about, and I'm not talking about famous podcasters. We like finding case studies that we think are applicable to everybody. And Lee Silverstein uh, of We Have Cancer has cracked the code, doubled his podcast downloads by uh, looking at his library and doing a very unique uh, Instagram thing that he's doing. So. Uh, Katie, my wife has done something similar. So we're going to cover some tools that I think are going to be phenomenal. Uh, we'll be covering, uh, Colin Gray, who has the podcast host is going to be covering how he uses his, uh, show notes, but he uses it in a very different way to attract tons of traffic to his website. Uh, very similar to a blog where most people, they post their show notes, but they don't use it strategically, uh, to drive tons of traffic. So you're going to see a lot of great traffic generation stuff. Uh, you're going to see a lot of, um, uh, you know, Jordan Harbinger is going to share a story. For those that don't know, he he was right. Art of Charm, and now it's the Jordan Harbinger Show. That's an interesting keynote that's going to be shared. And just uh, phenomenal uh, content about monetization. We have some experts on monetization that I think are going to be uh, really uh, top-notch for everybody attending. How to sell merch, how to sell uh, your downloads, uh, you know, uh, what we call CPM models. We, we actually have two or three different breakouts on monetization because last year we stuck it all in one. We're like, no, no, no. Let's niche it down because everybody wants very specific notes on what they're doing. And for people such as myself, I'm going to be attending the first time. For the first time, I'm super excited. What advice would you give uh, to first-time attendees for navigating all these these great different options so, going on? Well, that that is a problem. Um, I'm so good at uh, con uh, programming the content uh, that it becomes very difficult to figure out what to go to. The cool thing is, I would say 95% of our presenters are A plus when we get our review. So you're not going to, more than likely, the majority of stuff is going to be phenomenal. What I advise you, though, is if you could get in on Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night we have Trivial Warfare. We're going to play Trivial Warfare in the room. So all of us are going to have a trivia game and some prizes. It'll be good networking. And then Thursday you could pick and choose what you want. We have a full-day audio drama panel. We brought in some of the best audio drama creators in the world. And Ross, this is something I think you and I could learn from. Audio drama people know how to um, do what, what I call theater of mind podcasting. Wow. And um, they're really good at understanding sound effects, psychology, um, different kinds of production. I think we need to, as a lot of us are that are business podcasting type people, we need to really look at that space uh, to understand how to be better content creators. And then Thursday night is when we all come together from 6 to 9 p.m. at our strategic alliance. So I really advise you to bring at least 100 business cards because uh, the connecting is really intense. So I make it easy for you. You show up. You're going to have friends already there. You're going to have a blast. Uh, and anyone that's afraid, you come by yourself. We'll make sure that you feel welcome. And we have ways to integrate you into the group. It's a very, very warm and friendly environment. And it's a really great community. So that's Wednesday's the 6th, right? So the yeah, Wednesday's, Wednesday's the, the 6th. Day before. If you, the day before, come in, relax. We have, like, we'll have about 100 of us probably come together. And then we, we, we'll all hang out and have a really good time. That's a nice place to kind of meet people and build connections. Chris Kermitz says, thanks so much. It's thanks, Ross. Keep you. up the great work. Thank you. Thanks, my friend.